Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today we are going to discuss a case of hypocalcemia. A 15-year-old female present to the ER with complaints of numbness and tingling sensations of the face and twitching sensation of the upper limbs since one day duration. On our initial 10-second assessment, patient was conscious, oriented and obeying commands. Coming to airway, airway was patent, no hoarseness or no striders. Coming to breathing, respiratory rate of 22 per minute, saturation of 97 percentage in room air. Coming to circulation, pulse rate of 85 beats per minute, regular, BP of 120 bar 18 millimeters of mercury. Two large bore IV cannulas for incident at this point of time. While examining the BP, we noticed that uh, there were carpopital spasm in the upper limb. Coming to disability. What is that sign called? Uh, Trousseau sign. And so how uh, how will the patient keep the limb if there is carpopital spasm? Uh, if, we, if the patient is having carpopital spasm, we will uh, put the spigma magnetometer mm -hmm. and uh, above the systolic blood pressure, we will keep for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Then no need of 10 to 15, mm -hmm. more than the systolic BP, more than 20 millimeter of mercury of systolic BP, keep it for 2 to 3 minutes. That time itself we will be uh, having carpopital spans. Otherwise, if we are uh, inflating the BP cup for more than 15 minutes in a normal patient, it will be very difficult. So, only maximum 2 to 3 minutes, more than um, 20 of the systolic BP, above the systolic mm -hmm. BP. Okay. And then what will be seen? Uh, in the there limb? will be extension of the elbow, uh, flexion of the wrist, mm -hmm. uh, flexion of the metal carpophalangeal joint with the adduction of the fingers and extension of the interphalangeal joint. Yes. So, extension of the elbow, flexion of the metacarpophalangeal uh, wrist, flexion of the metacarpophalangeal joint, abduction of the fingers and extension of the interphalangeal joint will be seen. Okay. Coming to disability, GCS of 15 by 15, pupil bilaterally equally reacting to light. Coming to exposure, temperature of 98.2 degree Fahrenheit, GRBOs of 200 milligram per deciliter. Mm. Uh, then we go with the adjuncts to the primary survey. We took a VBG, uh, we showed a pH of uh, 7, actually we planned for an ABG, mm. but we got a VBG showing a pH of 7.40, PSO2 of 40 and bicarb of uh, 20, 28, Magne uh, of 28. Then we took an e ECG at this point of time, we showed a heart rate of uh, 80 beats per minute with a QTC of uh, 500 milliseconds. Okay. So, uh, in the primary survey and adjuncts to primary survey, uh, if it is a hypocalcemia case, what all things we should check? Uh, initially, we need to… Uh, From the airway? Airway, we have to look for any strider, laryngospasm has to be ruled out. So, mm -hmm. airway, we have to look for uh, any hoarseness, strider mm -hmm. has to be examined. Then, any tectony or any difficulty in opening mouth, that mm -hmm. will do. Okay. Breathing? Uh, any hyperventilation is there or not? Why hyperventilation? Know. Uh, because of patients with panic attack or hyperventilation syndrome, that can cause a transient hypocalcemia. Okay. Hypocalcemia, why? Uh, due to alkalosis. Uh, due Al to alkalosis, the albumin uh, get uh, more sites for binding to calcium. As mm -hmm. it is, there will be free calcium or ionized calcium will come to load. So, how is calcium distributed in our body? Uh, 50 percentage will be in bone, 40 percentage will be bound to albumin. Ah, and hundred Out of the 100 percentage of calcium in our body, 99 percentage will be in the bone. Only one percentage is in the blood blood cells. Out of that one percentage, 50 percentage is ionized. Ionized means it is free, free, calcium. Form, free calcium. Okay. And uh, rest 40 percentage is bounded to albumin mm -hmm. and rest 10 percentage bounded to phosphorus, phosphate. Okay, so 40 percentage is only bounded to albumin and if the patient is having some uh, metabolic alkalosis or respiratory alkalosis, what will happen is the alkalosis will increase the tendency of the free ionized calcium in the body to go and bind to albumin. So that will cause a hypocalcemia to the patient. Okay. Uh, then so a respiratory alkalosis, process. then circulation. Uh, circulation, secondary to hyperventilation there can be tachycardia. Uh, uh, in hypocalcemia, the, uh, there can be bradycardia. Bradycardia and one more thing is there? QTC prolongation. QTC prolongation also okay. there. So, in this patient, uh, in the circulation itself, we, along with large pore IV cannulas, you have to attach the cardiac monitors okay. also. Then what else can you see uh, in uh, disability? Uh, the signs of hypocalcemia can be elicited. Yeah, signs of uh, hypocalcemia uh, can be elicited along with that. GCS we have to say sometimes hypocalcemia can altered cause altered behavior. behavior. So GCS is important. Then signs of hypocalcemia. Anyway, when we are inflating the BP cuff, we will be able to see the carpopital spasm. Then uh, other signs in the exposure we can see the which sign? Sirsok sign. 
Okay. Tapping on How? the branches of the facial nerve, there will be twitching on that side. Okay, okay. So, adjuncts to primary survey, you have taken ABG. Uh, ABG, there is no alkalosis. Mm-hmm. We are seeing it for alkalosis. Why? What is the um, relation between the uh, um, pH and the calcium? Uh, for every uh, 0.1 uh, change in pH, uh, mm-hmm. the calcium level will fall by 0.16. Okay, so uh, uh, every P- if pH increases by 0.1, 0.1. calcium will decrease by 0.16. 0.16. Okay, so uh, that is which calcium, ionized calcium is falling, not the normal mm-hmm. calcium level, the ionized calcium is falling. What is the normal calcium level in the body? It is around 8.5 to 10.5, 10.5. normal uh, calcium in the body. Ionized calcium is 50 percentage of that. So, uh, around uh, 5.6 to, uh, sorry, 4.5 to 5.6. So, the ionized calcium value will fall according to the ABG change. Uh, What was ionized calcium in our ABG? Uh, 0.50. 0.50. That is in millimoles. Okay. Okay. So, that is less. Okay. Then ECG, uh, what all things will you see? QTC? Bradycardia, QTC prolongation and any arrhythmias will be there. Uh, arrhythmias will. And in a case of, uh, along with that, in case of severe hypocalcemia, there can be Osborne waves. What is Osborne waves? Uh, uh, during the QRS complex, there will be... It is uh, it is equal to RBBB pattern. pattern. You have seen RBBB, no? Mm-hmm. So awesome. mostly it will be like a rabbit tear pattern. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is see Osborne waves are seen in two conditions. One is hypocalcemia Hyper- and one is hypothermia. 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 So um, this Osborne waves can also be seen in hypocalcemia. Okay. Uh, then at this point of time, we have given uh, injection calcium gluconide 10 ml, 10 percentage over 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And we reassess the patient. Still, the patient was having the twitching and muscle spasms were there. So we give another dose of injection calcium gluconide, and we have to given totally three doses of calcium gluconide. After which, the patient could recover. Mm. Uh, then so we the indication of high calcium gluconide in this patient was uh, one ECG changes and also this muscle spasms were okay, there, okay. signs. Then we come to ample history. A 59-year-old female post thyroidectomy five years back. Present to the ER with complaints of numbness and tingling sensations all over the face and twitching of the upper limb since one day. Uh, there was associated spasm of the wrist and the fingers. Uh, the patient gave history of similar episodes in the past also. Uh, there was no history of any stride up, palpitation, convulsions, uh, altered behavior, irritability, depression, breathlessness or giddiness. No history of any allergies. The patient was currently okay, so on. So these were the clinical manifestations. What all other clinical manifestation does hypocalcemia have? Uh, muscular uh, mm. clinical symptoms like uh, we can see fatigue, uh, generalized tiredness can be there. Cramps, muscle cramps can be there. Mm. Coming to neuromuscular, seen as pictures like uh, there can be depression, uh, irritability, altered behavior, convulsions, hallucinations can be the dermatological features like uh, coarse dry skin, uh, brittle nails can be seen. Serious manifestations, there can be hypertension, congestive cardiac failure and ECG findings correspond to that can be seen. Then miscellaneous manifestations like a cataract, benign intracranial hypertension like can be seen. Mm. Okay. I know history of any allergies. The patient is currently on uh, calcium and uh, thyroid supplements. Uh, the patient also gives history of similar episodes in the past. Immediately after post thyroidectomy, the patient had history of hypoparathyroidism secondary to surgery. Mm-hmm. The patient had similar episodes of this uh, past two episodes in one year. Mm-hmm. And currently, the patient was on calcium and thyroid supplements, but for past two weeks, the patient was not taking properly the calcium supplements also. Okay, so how much, um, so in the sample history, the important history is um, regarding the past history, any past triggering factor of uh, hypocalcemia. So here we got a triggering factor as post thyroidectomy. Okay, uh, what else can be there as a triggering factor? Uh, triggering factors, uh, one is most common is secondary to surgery, post thyroid <laughs> surgery mm. is another thing. Uh, then there can be acute renal failure or CKD mm. even can cause. So uh, a history of renal failure renal should, failure be, asked, should then? be asked. Uh, then any acute stressors like uh, there can be secondary hemolysis, tumor lysis syndrome uh, mm. can cause uh, hypocalcemia. Mm. Uh, 
ദെൻ എനി ഡ്രഗ് ഇൻടേക്ക് ലൈക് സിസ്പ്ലാറ്റിൻ അമിനോ ഗ്ലൈക്കോസൈഡ്സ് സ്റ്റിറോയിഡ് ഇൻടേക്ക് ബിസ്ഫോസ്ഫോണേറ്റ്സ് സോ ഡ്രഗ് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഇസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് സോ എസ്പെഷ്യലി ഇൻ എൽഡർലി ഫീമെയിൽസ് ദേ മൈക്ക് ബി ടേക്കിംഗ് ബിസ്ഫോസ്ഫോണേറ്റ് സോ ബിസ്ഫോസ്ഫോണേറ്റ്സ് ദെൻ കാൽസിറ്റോണിൻ ദെൻ ആംഫോഡർസിൻ ബി സിട്രേറ്റ്സ് സ്റ്റിറോയിഡ്സ് കാൻ കോസ് so um, uh, along with that some antibiotics like tobramycin gentamicin and all and we should also ask for any recent history of any blood transfusion because blood transfusion will have citrate content so that can also cause hypocalcemia okay the last meal was taken at 2 pm so what is the normal calcium uh, uh, daily requirement for a patient 2 gram One, 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 two, one, one gram is one gram per day. So if this patient is already having that and patient should uh, along with the dietary, if at all dietary is deficient, the patient has to take one gram calcium every day. So patient recently uh, has multiple history of hypocalcemia, skipped the calcium tablet and now came with hypocalcemia. Okay. Then we again reassess the patient uh, and still ECG changes were present and patient complaining of uh, recurrent muscle spasms also. Mm. So we started on uh, infusion of calcium. Mm. Uh, we have given, uh, initially we will take 5 gram, uh, 500 ml, uh, 5% dextrose at the rate of 1 to 2 uh, milligram per kilogram like, uh, per weight. Like that weight we will calculate and we started the infusion. Mm. So we can uh, take 1 liter of D5 water, in that we can take 5 ampules of 10 ml, 10% of calcium gluconate and you can start as a slow infusion can be started and uh, how should you monitor calcium? Uh, every 6th uh, hourly. Every 6th hourly you need to calculate, okay. So before calculating the, uh, correcting the calcium, what else you should rule out? Uh, first we need to send the okay. albumin level and uh, look at the corrected calcium level. Mm. Here, what is the relation between albumin and calcium uh, the character calcium is uh, serum calcium plus 4 minus serum albumin into 0.8 mm. okay so what is the albumin in this patient uh, 3.5 the character calcium came at around 7 uh, 7 okay. okay okay uh, so the uh, albumin we need to check then then uh, here the this patient we already know the cause but if at all a patient comes without a cause we need to think of such things and we need to send investigation then what is uh, look at the parathyroid hormone level and magnesium levels okay so, yeah. so uh, what is the importance of parathyroid uh, parathyroid hormone uh, based on parathyroid hormone levels there can mm-hmm. be true hypoparathyroidism and uh, pseudo hypoparathyroidism mm-hmm. in true hypoparathyroidism like in akc kd uh, post surgery everything there will be uh, decrease serum calcium increase uh, phosphorus and decrease parathyroid hormone level that is a true hypoparathyroidism mm. so uh, uh, parathyroid how it is important is parathyroid will mobilize the calcium from the bones and it will increase the absorption of calcium from the intestine yes. and it will uh, decrease the excretion of calcium yes. so uh, parathyroid is very important uh, what is the uh, role of vitamin d vitamin d also uh, same like parathyroid hormone only the difference is that in uh, renal system uh, the parathyroid hormone will causes uh, both calcium and uh, phosphate uh, calcium absorption and phosphate excretion mm. uh, parathyroid hormone whereas uh, vitamin d will causes both calcium and phosphate reabsorption, reabsorption. And one more thing is that vitamin d promotes more of calcium absorption to the bone parathyroid will have a tendency to remove calcium okay so uh, hypo hypoparathyroidism should be suspected uh, that can be secondary to post thyroid surgery then uh, magnesium levels uh, ah, what is the relation uh, between magnesium and uh, calcium uh, magnesium is one of the most common reversible causes of hypocalcemia mm. uh, magnesium will causes one is uh, transient shift and also it can cause partial parathyroid hormone resistance also as a result there can be hypocalcemia ah so magnesium deficiency of magnesium can cause redu- reduction in uh, parathyroid level and resistance to that so that should be checked then rft ah rft to check for the renal function renal so functions. if there is any renal failure there can be hypocalcemia and hyperphosphatemia okay then any condition that can increase the phosphorus level in the body like uh, supplements with uh, patient taking uh, at for sash or extra phosphorus tablets or patient is um, taking bisphosphonate so extra phosphorus can reduce the calcium then uh, post surgery then some syndromes like dijord syndrome and all will have hypoparathyroidism then pseudo 
uh, hyperparathyroidism can be there then then conditions that can reduce the albumin level in the body which are they cld cld um, chronic renal okay. failure then vitamin d vitamin deficiency okay so what all investigations will you send uh, first is you have to send parathyroid hormone level uh, albumin yeah. level mm. look at the character calcium then we will go with magnesium level rft levels mm. uh, then phosphorus, phosphorus level to look check for high phosphorus okay. level okay so uh, what is the algorithm uh, in uh, hypocalcemia first investigation what will you send if calcium is low first investigation albumin and parathyroid uh, albumin to check for so character calcium. calcium then second is parathyroid, parathyroid. if parathyroid level is low what will you do check you are seeing it as low so what el- what should you see uh, magnesium mm. then magnesium mm. level to see for uh, see whether the magnesium is reducing the parathyroid so next is parathyroid so if uh, parathyroid level is normal then what will you send rfts renal function test renal function test to check for renal failure if that also is normal vitamin d vitamin d level okay vitamin d might be the cause okay then uh, this patient calcium infusion was started Sorry. then what happened uh, so uh, and mm. the calcium level gradually increased mm. uh, right now the patient is planning for discharge okay okay so while you are correcting the calcium make sure that you have attached the cardiac monitor mm. and uh, we will have to send fourth hourly calcium then we will have to also uh, take ecgs in between and to see whether the qtc is also getting corrected if qtc is still prolonged we will have to give uh, uh, bolus doses of uh, calcium gluconate over 10 minutes okay anything else Thank you.